I can see we are live, Paul, and uh, welcome everybody to another Truth Proof live stream uh, Sunday Sunday evening. Welcome, yes. Paul. Uh, thanks a lot, Les, and uh, I just need to hold my hand up, and I haven't published this or posted this on social media, so we might just be talking between ourselves and uh, Alison, who's doing moderating for us tonight, but uh, yeah. as always, it's still okay. What have you been up to? Well, funny enough, uh, weather's picking up a little bit, so I've had to do some chores outside, and uh, which I did this afternoon, and uh, obviously we're still posting plenty of stuff on social media, Paul. Well, I know you've been busy with that, and I've been busy on these early no morning jaunts to uh, Dane's Dyke, and I found myself on Cliffs at Bempton early one morning, and as well as the nighttime uh, visits, so... Yeah, it, well, it just never stops, and I'm not even complaining because I'd do this anyway. I'd get up anyway. Uh, if I once I wake up, I feel like I've got to get get up. And life's life's for living. It's not for laying in bed, as far as I'm concerned. And I know a lot of people enjoy that, so I'm not knocking them. But yeah, I mean, I can't see anybody in chat now at the moment because of uh, my inadequacy adequacies of uh, not posting. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you want to put something on your on your face, but page now and say we're live now that uh, might i could do yeah yeah let's just yeah. bear with me and i, think, I ought to have done that before i think we're just uh, talking amongst ourselves at the moment it doesn't matter if anybody is in the chat please uh just put a post in there if we, if we can't see you or for whatever reason and uh yeah it's all good it doesn't matter <laughs> so i've just posted that so we'll uh We'll just uh, hold on a minute. Let's just have a look. I see that somebody's just asking, actually. Yes. Oh, are they? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do that. And we're not, there's nothing hurting here. We're not killing anything, are we? So uh, I'll just have a look on the, the live stream now and just see whether anybody's actually in the chat. I can't even see it, Les. Is it actually, is it actually on? Because it's not uh, there, mate. Let's have a look. Have you actually put it on as a live because it's not there? Well, <laughs> don't say this is one of one of the biggest f ups that uh, uh, this week. But um, let's have a look. Let me go and check. I've I've clicked um, on live and it's not there. Really? I thought it was no. unusual. There's nobody in. Let's go. Let me come. Well, on. We might as well bring Alison back in for a minute. <laughs> I don't know, it's not it's not. It's not even there, look. Right, no, it's not okay. there. No. Right, that's... Uh, let me go on uh, check in here. <sighs> Sorry about that, Alison. Yeah, no, we, it's don't, all we, right. don't often, we don't often get days like this. No. Um, it's a good job Les said check on Facebook, and then I thought, well, I'll just have a look on, on, <laughs> yeah. on there. Yeah, let's see what's happening. It's weird. It's weird how it hasn't done that, though, isn't it? You've not published it as a live event. I think you've left it dormant, Les. I've left it private, yeah. That's yeah, it. let's get usual, it. Usual in. subjects, yeah. it's We're on there now. Right. It'll okay. take a couple of minutes just to filter through, I think. Right. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's come on now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we are live after a slight hiccup uh, in the beginning there, Paul. <laughs> yeah. And, and we're live. Uh, we're alive. alive so shall I just put you in the background, so, Alison? Thank you. Yep. I'll see you in a bit. I'll see you in a bit later. And right. uh, yeah, so what have you been up to today, Les? We'll start again. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, well, with the weather picking up, uh, so it's a few chores outside to get through uh, for the start of the year. And um, obviously, we've been updating the social medias all weekend and getting mm -hmm. some good views on there. So quite pleased with that. So what have you been doing, Paul? Uh, a bit of the same, really, but I, I were up at five. I did a, a short for, for for stream and for you guys. And apologies, people. And it's we're going to blame Les tonight and we're going to blame Paul as well. I didn't publish this on social media and Les didn't put it live. So hands up, else you'd have got this much sooner. So I'm just looking here and we've got Rebecca in, Rob Hilton, Alison doing uh, moderating for us. Thanks, Alison. Wendy, Diane Farrell, Bob. Hey, up, mate, you all right? I want to believe, we all want to believe, yeah, Jeremiah Abbott, Sober Carper, Lisa Rod, Welsh Dragon, Mally, I think Mally, what, first one in, Mally Dodgson, it so was, it's yeah. good to see yeah. you, mate. Wendy yeah. Rose, uh, Lee, Steph, we we thought that we were in no man's land, we couldn't understand it, <laughs> we thought <laughs> Mom had dropped, 
But we were just talking. Uh, for, uh, we were just talking between the three of us, weren't we, for the first five minutes? Yeah, of the we show. were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mini Moose and uh, absolutely. I, I know Steph, uh, Michael Walters. I know I'll have missed some names here. Joanne, Alex Thompson. Uh, brilliant. And can we have some questions, please, tonight? Just hit us with some obviously decent questions. You know, some of that uh, nothing rude. And yeah, we'll we'll take it from there. You know, a few weeks ago, Les, uh, yeah, yeah, we we played some right at the end of one of streams. We played some dash cam footage, I'll which is no smoking yeah. gun of UFOs. There's no rush. There's but there's no yeah. smoking gun of ufology. I don't like that. But I'll just run people past what happened. Okay. Uh, I don't remember the exact date. It might actually be on Linny's dash cam, but. I pulled out of the RSPB reserve, drove through Bempton, rainy night, horrible. That's why we wrapped it early. Lynn is behind me. That might even get correct date, does it? Let's have a look. And, uh, yeah, so it's more than a few weeks ago. Uh, but time's wrong. I'm sure time's wrong, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so, anyway, Lynn is behind me. As I just leave the village going through the 60-mile-an-hour signs there's a flash of light i call it the kapow moment because it imagine it reminded me of something like what you'd seen batman films when you saw that little star and uh, obviously you, you see it but there's there's also reflection at rain on road and everything but i just want to run people through it les that's buffering a bit simply because i pulled in go on we'll just do it not that, that's my brake lights, obviously. Oh no, I've pulled in now, we've missed it. So Linny pulls in in front of me, asks me if everything's okay. Oh, you're doing it again. Did you see that splash of red light? Just watch it there. Bosh. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So <clears throat> that. I assure you, people, was not the reflection off my brake lights or anything. A, how would I have known to pull in? I actually saw this light. Just play the sequence, Les. Right. There it is. Yeah. I don't know where it come from. It was low. There's, and I pull in there, obviously, and he pulls up at the side of me, asks me what the problem is. And I said, did you see the orange light, the flash of light? And he said he didn't. Uh, but his, his dash cam, there it is. It's, it's undeniable. I mean, it's there. His dash cam picked it up. Yeah. Oh. Where it come from, I don't know. But, but let's have some questions in capitals uh, about anything, unexplained nature. You know, it doesn't just have to be about that. But I know that we just fitted it in right at the end of the stream, didn't we, one Sunday about yeah, three or yeah, four we weeks did. ago. So yeah. I, I thought, let's just go through that again because... Say it's, it's no, it's not proof of the existence of beings from another world, is it? But it's just interesting, nevertheless. So I can see there's Robert Hilton's got a question there. Uh, I don't know, you want to put it up or I'll yeah, read it? I'll look. Yeah, um, well, I'll just start from uh, the order I've got things here okay. from uh, Watch Dragon Rising. Question for Les, when is the next tale from the crypt, please? Uh, well, it was ghost, <laughs> ghost stories, wasn't it? But uh, well, yeah. yeah, but it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, uh, they'll be coming. We're just trying to fit things in. That's all, uh, Welsh Dragon. Yeah, so it's just a matter of trying to fit things in. But there's there's no there's no plan to drop them. Put it that way. Okay. So and there's no shortage of them, Les. There's no shortage of no, the, no, there isn't. Is hauntings it? and ghost stories around Eastern North Yorkshire, and I would yeah. imagine Welsh Dragon. Uh, I bet there's lots of hauntings around the locations where you live and all these other people. I mean, I think you're going to stick to East Yorkshire, are you, for now? Uh, predominantly, yeah. I think that's uh, kind of what I'm looking at here in front yeah. of me. But, uh, yeah. But all in due course, uh, I'm sure. Okay, so Snoz, uh, evening, being up the East Coast this weekend. Any reports from the woods behind Scarborough, the Forge Valley? I've never, never realised how wooded that area was yes it's, it's tremendous size, isn't it yeah uh, I, 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 and just out of interest you're not the same guy that you don't have to say yes but has got a that goes to the caravan site at attic are you if you are i don't know just say yes and because it's a small world if you are uh but yeah um obviously forge valley woods behind scarborough 
that's where a lot of what we filmed in our documentary Wolflands, that's where a lot of that information and those reports were coming from. There's there's loads and loads. And, you know, you'll know then if you're familiar with area Raincliffe Woods. And I was talking to a, a young fella, I think about 29, 30, called James Coppert earlier this week. And he gave me a report that he saw himself whilst driving through Raincliffe Woods mm. of a red sphere of light. And he said it had all tentacles hanging from it, a bit like I don't know, you picture some kind of jellyfish. Yeah. Uh, and it travelled across the road. But what was interesting, it, when it went into trees, he said he could see it weaving in and out at trees. I can't remember year. And I might have even had that earlier, to be honest with you. So I could have gone into more detail. And uh, I'll have a look, and we'll 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 have a look at that in a bit more detail if I can yeah. find it. Well, so and, uh, for, for anybody who's not familiar with that area, uh, this rain, rain, rain cliff was Forge Valley near Scarborough. Once the woods start at Forge Valley, then they go into a, a mass amount through North Yorkshire, through lots and lots of woods, don't they? They're kind of they nearly all joined on. up. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. They're only they're only separated really, Les, by name. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, a, and, yeah. A, and a little road. And we probably. know in grand scheme of things, like if you went to America or Canada, it's a minute. But mm. but for United Kingdom, it's five hundred and twenty-five miles of woodland, moor, and farmland. So it's a lot. But you know, like you've just said, the Forge Valley, the entrance to the Forge Valley, that was the start of Wolflands. Really, once we got yeah. from Flixton, that was start of it. Lots of things, L loads and loads of. It's the most interesting place that. Uh, we've ever done any work in, I think. I know it's great to be on cliff tops at Speeton, but if you want absolutely incredible scenery, get up there to it. It's, it's just untouched. It's brilliant. I know we're going to touch this one on the story after the uh, next item that we're doing, but I'll put it on the screen now. Uh, Robbie Hilton, uh, read the orb a video on Twitter, X today, what camera were you using to record the video? We're going to show <laughs> that uh, after the next uh, yeah. photo. Yeah, Robert, uh, what I use, I've, I've got, as Les knows, and Les is the same, Chris Turner's the same, we spend far too much money on cameras. So I use a Psyonics because it's great in low light, but you don't get a true representation of what you're looking at. But but if you want to see something in dark, ideally get the Psyonics out, unless you're going to spend literally thousands and thousands of pounds. But the if you saw that, what I put... Well, sorry, if you saw that, what Les put on Twitter today that, that I filmed, uh, that was filmed on a Sony NX80 4K camera. And, and, and everything, it would it were down to about 12 frames per second. It, everything would just sort of really wound down to allow as much light into that camera as possible. And I'm not going to run through that one, Robert, because we're going to do it in a moment. But that it was a Sony NX80. And I really rate that camera because it, Les has got two of them. It's a good all-round camera, Les, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, it's um... Not the uh, don't gather as uh, as much light as uh, some of the more top end of the Sony camera range, but um, yeah, it, it does it does pretty well for its uh, for its uh, size and uh, and its cost. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I had I had before that, Rob. I don't know, Robert. I don't know whether people are interested in purchasing an half decent camera for low light footage and quality is not brilliant. But I had a Sony VX twenty one hundred, and I bet you could pick them up now for next to nothing. And it cost me about two and a half grand when I bought it a lot of years ago. Les might not even know when they were made. Uh, we're going back a lot of years, but it's... Yeah, I, I'm not as old as that, Paul. I don't quite go <laughs> far back yeah. in time. Uh, yeah, 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 you want to get rid of Sheik. Uh, but <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great camera. And for low light, if you see one cheap and it looks half decent and it's working, I recommend the uh, the VX2100. It's absolutely brilliant. I reckon you'd pick one up for less than £100 today. But there you go. And I, let me just have a look here. And uh, I don't know whether I should be saying this, but I think Martin Abbas is in. And congratulations to Martin Abbas. That's all I'll say. Uh, great to hear from you today, mate. And Barbara Davis, Jojo, Blue Shift, D Moon, uh, Monsoon, Ben22, Stephen Bradshaw. Uh, I'm just Jeremiah Jackson. And we've already done Robert Hilton. You've had your question. You've got your question there, mate, haven't you? So yeah, super. Yeah. Okay. So I've just about got the next picture queue queued up, uh, Paul. Out of the three that year we uh, sent through. And uh, if you want to just can I just before you go to it because I can just see because he's but he's put it on in not in caps. Sorry, Les. 
But Robert Ilton's just put, I am a P1000 man. Uh, oh, and yeah. it's, it's a brilliant zoom on it, Anti. I have a P900. P900, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think P1000 is, is just a little bit heavy, I think. But I don't like them in low light. But an, an amazing camera. If, if you want to look at Moon, then you're not going to get out better than that thing. But <clears throat> there you go. Okay, so we've got three photos that you got sent through to your desk. Uh, I've got one of them lined up, and it's... Uh, and I'll tell you why the relevance of these then, yeah. Do you want me to put that one on, on now? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So it's so, so a, just to break junk. down on this, uh, earlier in the week, I think it was Wednesday, Steph and Rebecca, I think it was in, in chat now, Rebecca King, came up to the clifftops and asked us if we'd meet them. So there were me, Pete, and Linny. And we met these, we've met them before at conferences as well. Like, so it was great to meet up and spend a few hours with them. Uh, well, I don't know, it's probably spent three or four hours, but uh, nothing untoward seen. But what I found interesting, I don't know if uh, Lynn is in chat, but a, a few months ago, me, Pete, and Linny saw a black kind of egg shaped object that just rose up and then went back down. Yeah, uh, a couple of times, and we, you, you may have heard us talking about it if you if you've been in these chats before. Uh, and then, as I say, uh, I think it was Steph that took these pictures, and she was looking at them today and noticed this black thing, which could, in all fairness, be a bug. But I just thought it was interesting in in view of what we saw a few weeks ago. Although what we saw was closer, and it was kind of egg shaped. Yeah. So, so just so, just for the yeah, viewers, uh, Paul, people in the stream, just give us a an indication of where the camera is pointing uh, in, on the landscape. Okay, yeah. So we're looking from the cliffs inland, and that building that you can right. see that oblong, uh, oh, well, that's kind of square building to the right hand there. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one of the old. I think it's one of the old plinths for the Type eighty red radar on RAF Bempton, the former RAF Bempton. So that's right. where you would be looking there. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you, you can see what we're looking at or what uh, Steph's picked up in the picture, which let's hold his hands up, people. It's it's not the smoking gun of ufology, but it's just it's interesting that when you look at pictures, you can find things. It's not a face peeping out of a leaf that is a leaf. It's there is something there, even if it's a bug. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Good one. Yeah. Um, and I think the other pictures are broadly the same. Uh, the the same. I think what they're doing, Les, they're just showing that there's nothing else there. It's not, yeah. you know, a, a pole that's just distorted with with something on top of it. Oh, uh, let's have a look. Have I got another one? Yeah. You just ramble on for a few seconds while I just well, I'm good at rambling on. The, uh, I've been looking at some historic sightings today because uh, I just I love the old sightings and. Filey throws a lot of them up. I was fortunate enough to uh, get information from the former hairdresser at Fi in Filey. And when I say the former hairdresser, that kind of sounds like there's only ever been one in Filey. Well, I imagine years and years ago, there wouldn't have been many hairdressers in Filey. Not back in the 60s and 70s. There might have been two or three. I don't know. But this lady, just like in a barber's shop, you, you get information, don't you? You get people sat in chair and... You, you know, you're doing the hair, not just yeah. women. She used to do the police officers that were in file. She used to do the fishermen, and she'd get little bits of information. Yeah. And she Goss was interested. Gossip, I think they call it, Paul. <laughs> it's called gossip. Well, yeah, it's called gossip, but I'll yeah. we'll just call it information. I don't want to call this lady a gossip, do I? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she was a gossip. No, no, no. So she get little bits of information. And obviously having an interest in the unexplained, uh, her ears would prick up. And there were one night, but this police officer came in for his air cut and he started telling her about the night in the previous week where they pursued a UFO in a car, obviously flying this thing. And I've told this story before and they're pursuing it through this little town, finally. And there's one of those big gasometer, this big gasometer, the tank yeah. thing. And it just went straight into the side of it and disappeared. Uh, so obviously the, there's no substance to it if it can do that. Otherwise there'd have been a large explosion, probably. Or, you know, so, so, so that was one story. Then she came up with the other story of of her and her husband walking along the cliff tops. You can 
They're not like Bempton and Speaton, but they're still quite steep. And looking at Filey Brig, this outcrop of rock that sort of juts out into the Bay of Filey for a mile. Obviously, at high tide, you can't even see it. That's why it was so treacherous to ships. And when you got the people in, in times gone by would deliberately try and tell people it were a safe haven to wreck boats on them 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 rocks, to plunder whatever <laughs> were in these ships. We're going back to probably 16, 1700s, but regardless. So the, the rocks are exposed at low tide, this mile-long stretch of rocks. And she's walking with her husband. This is not something she were told. She saw it. And a vehicle, long, she can't describe it as a bus, but it has windows in it. And she can see occupants in it. Mm. And, and it's impossible. If you anybody who's ever been to Filey Brig, you, you know, you'd, you'd get down onto it and you'd jump down four foot onto a rock ledge and then you'd go across six foot and then jump up three or four foot. It's, it's literally, no, not, not even a four before would get up it. I, I think a trials bike could struggle. But this vehicle is going along it. And literally goes off end and goes into sea. So just a, a quirky little story. And then I got this historic sighting from before the war. And so obviously this is a second-hand account because you know I, I, this chap who witnessed it told his friend, and I and I've got this sighting. And they were fishing, and I've wrote this down. Let's just have a look. They were fishing in uh, off in they were fishing off rocks at Filey Brig into crab. Hole, so obviously the, the name suggests that there's going to be crabs there, uh, which is at the end of Filey Brig, at the south side of Filey Brig, and they're overlooking Flamborough. And when everybody says Flamborough, which is interesting because first thing you see is Speeton. Yeah, it's that outcrop of rock. Everybody assumes it's Flamborough. You're looking at Speeton, but anyway, they see the outcrop of rocks, and off off the cliff face in the air they see a large white cigar shaped object this is before war they observed it for 10 minutes before it sped away into the distance silently so mm -hmm. once again it's just proving that these things have they've been here decades and decades if not thousands and thousands of years there's there's no shortage of reports and I, i'm I, I can't keep up with them to be honest with you but uh, yeah Interesting, isn't it? But yeah. it's all linked. Everything's just just there. It's all ingredients are there for the strange in this area. But it, what I found fascinating, it was just off the cliff face towards Speeton. We know that you know it could have been further back. It could have been towards Flamborough, but it's hard to gauge it when all you're looking at that's silhouetted cliff face. Because we've got that police officer sighting there from 2005, I think, on Enders Filey Brig, which I spoke about a few weeks ago with his wife, couple behind him. They see the object and it zigzags across the sea and stops above them. If that's not meant for them, then I don't know what is. Do you know? It's yeah. it's crazy. Do we have any more questions, Les? Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm first of all, while I've got this queued up, we'll just uh, okay. bring bring go back to the previous story we was talking about on it. I okay. think this is a. Yeah, this is a different one, isn't it? So it's it's has it moved in this. Uh, uh, I don't know, it? to be honest, Les. Uh, it may not have, it may have, but uh, the, I That's think the point it. is, yeah. the, the, I mean, the backstory to our experiences from a few months ago when me, Pete and Linny were in this area. I don't know if he's in chat. He might want to add to it if he is. Pete will be listening, but he won't He, he won't come in chat, will you, mate? <laughs> but uh, uh, Ian suddenly started saying there's a can you see that orange light around your feet and around pete's feet we couldn't see anything and he, he got quite animated he got quite not upset but annoyed that we he could see it and to the point of thinking am i going mad so that happened but literally five to ten minutes later he's he's grabbed pete bit shoulder and he's saying get down get down can you see that and there's a black egg-shaped thing above the hedges a lot closer than that yeah i didn't know what they're looking at at first but when i when i started looking in direction that they were talking about sure how, far, enough, how far on this photo would that be away from the your photographer paul i think that's 200 yards away yeah uh, roughly you know i think that'll be 200 yards away uh you know it could be it could be two to three hundred but i'd say 200 yards away but what we saw months ago were probably only about 100 yards away uh, and he went up the next day in daylight. He wanted to sort of scan the area. But yeah. I just thought in relation to 
you know what what we saw this black egg shaped object that were in an interesting picture uh, and we know it's night time so that thing could have been colored light blue for all we know or white but you, it's going to look black in dark isn't it but yeah yeah good right questions uh let's have a look then uh, let's have a look uh, no. right yeah. stargazer annie french let's have a look yep mark anderson uh paul or orange lights usually seen overseas my only orange orb was over the tear in scotland do, do you know mark I, th I think that these lights are integral to the the entire subject of unexplained phenomena and because you you can see, you can see evidence of them in lots and lots of reports and and if we just cited the areas the the key areas of eye strangeness you know the the, the locations that produce all the, these different types of unexplained phenomena what do we see spheres of light and primarily orange lights when we spoke to guys from wilson ranch carl crusher yeah. and uh, uh come on mernie can't remember jeff and Jeff, a few weeks ago, I asked about the orange Mac lights. McBurney, yeah. Mac yeah. Uh, he, they they pressed, you know, sort of really stressed that the orange lights are seen there as well. So it's it's all over the place. But the, I, I don't suppose, Mark, everything's orange. We've seen yellow ones. We've seen blue ones. Quite what they are and what the significance of the lights are connected to other forms of unexplained phenomena, I don't know. But it just seems that the light forms are present. You know, we've done it before with the cryptid sightings and and people will often say, oh, there were another thing that interesting as well. We saw some strange lights in, in forest or yeah. in woodland. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fascinating. And OK, yeah, I've got Phil 84. Uh, is Paul aware of any unusual reports from the other side of the North Sea opposite to Bempton? Um, no, but I'll tell you what, uh, Rev, I don't know if he's in chat, but Rev, I was talking to Rev earlier in the week and... He, when he come up with some, he'd, he'd been looking, doing a bit of geography, and we just talked about Mount Wilson, and he said it's it's a, there's a straight line if you if you look on maps and do the geography from there to the east coast, unrestricted. There's no mountains and there's no big masses of steep terrain in the way, which I found interesting. I don't know what that means really, mm. but. Uh, he, he'd, he'd been looking because that's kind of thing he does. He, he he does look deep into things. So so at the other side of the North Sea, no. I mean, in 1998, uh, when the at the height of the Triangle sightings and a lot of UFO activity on the North East and North Yorkshire coast, I do know that Denmark and other areas were also having it. I think it was 1998 when the newspaper, one of the national newspapers, rip reported i think and i think it were april 1998 a ufo the size of a battleship it said a thousand nine hundred foot long object seen zigzagging on radar across the north sea it made the newspapers and there'll still be reports out there about that which has, is fascinating isn't it you know if, if there's any any truth to it i mean it, just because it made papers don't mean it's uh, it's accurate but yeah Okay, so um, Alex Thompson is asking, Paul, do you have any knowledge of the government monitoring these strange events on the coast? Would we know? You've Would seen we know, Alex? We've seen military <laughs> vehicles uh, it, you uh, know, a couple at, of years ago. Yeah, at the height of when everything was happening in 2017 through to February 2019 with the animal fatalities and, and all the UFO activity that were taking place, there were military vehicles placed. I think that w they could have been placed in a lot more places as well, but there, were, there was one on the clifftops at Bempton. There was one at Garton on the Wolds. There was one at Gransmore. <clears throat> Bearing in mind, this could have been some elaborate military exercise that were taking place, but these were, these were ram pickups uh, with a big... I think we put pictures up before. There's big box on the back. Uh, and it weren't mm -hmm. covered, but it, every panel on the box had the, the hazard sign, a radiation sign on it, and they had a big dish on the top, not like a satellite dish. It was more like a tube, like a great big pan of a dish, but like a tube, it was deep. And uh, that uh, that was at the same time as when all of this 
carnage with animals were taking place and everything else. But would we know? Would we know if people are monitoring? I mean, if they're so covert, we talk about that incident at Crab Rocks in 1966 where the three fishermen were hauling crab pots at Crab Rocks and they saw the sphere of light above their heads and they kind of ducked because they saw a reflection of it in water. But when they went back to shore at Flamborough, there's men in suits waiting to speak to them. How does that work? <laughs> it's just it's just nuts. Who oh, could have known? Uh, oh, well, it's some elaborate military tech that they were testing, but this is 19, I think it's 1966. Mm. So it's, it's a long time, over 50 years ago, and it's, we're talking about a sphere of light the size of a football. And uh, I love saying it, third ball is what the Flamborough guy told me, who well, actually saw it. <clears throat> Let's have a look then. Uh... Lee Roscoe, question, Paul, the shot you added late night or last night or late night with Bobby yeah, Wolfen, yeah. when did this activity start? Was it in 2024? It, all I can say, well, when did it come to my attention? Uh, I'd have said mid-February, but it, this is Lee. Lee, this could have started before. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know. But at late February, sorry, mid-February is when I found out that allegedly people had been sort of chased out of the dike by, of all things, a sphere of light. Uh, there's there's more on that. In fact, I got the date. It was 14th of March. That the sphere, So we're not February. 14th of, let me get this right, 14th of February that the sphere of light pursued people out of the dike. I'm sure that's the date it was. And uh, then we've got reports of the dead animals on the beach. Badgers of under cliffs. That don't fit, does it? Let's face it. Uh, we know they're omnivorous, so we know that they're opportunists and they'll eat anything. But I've, I've not really seen badgers. I spend a lot of time up and around there and up and on cliffs, and I've not seen badgers under the cliffs on the edge of the sea. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but any old dead badger looked absolutely pristine. So we're not talking about anything that's had anything removed from it. A dead seal, pristine, and then a porpoise that were literally in the same condition as the animals and the, the marine mammals that we were finding in 26, 2017. I said that without saying that horrible word, didn't I? So we're, we're, we're all good there. And But there's more because... I, I, I put the message out today because somebody told me that they've been finding them at Barmston or somebody's message to say they've been found at Barmston. Uh, not just marine mammals, as in seals and porpoise, but deer as well with face facial stripping. So I need to, I need, I'm not saying I need, but I want to find out more about that as well. You know, it's not, it's not some kind of, it, there's no pleasure in finding these animals, but I want to find out or t t try and, Find, I'll try and find out what's happening, what's responsible, what are mechanisms involved, and is it starting again? And that's the, that was the title of uh, the short that we put out, because that's what I firmly believe it is. Yeah, and uh, for those who are unaware of uh, where Bamston is in relation to what's already been seen and what's already been reported, Paul, how far away is it from from these areas? It's six miles from from where I'm sat now. I, I'm in Bridlington, so yeah. probably eight miles from from Bempton, and and, and you, you know, so it's not far mm. in the grand scheme of things. It's it's not far at all. When we're only along coast, and imagine that six mile stretch of coastland co coastline. Imagine what else yeah. is being missed and not picked up by people because a lot of it's inaccessible, and a lot of it doesn't get any footfall. So you know we don't we don't know true extent of, of what's what's happening at all times, do we? No, no, no. And uh, and this is it. And uh, you, 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 I think f from your past reports, Paul, <clears throat> uh, you kind of get like a corridor, don't you? You get you get like a corridor of events where mm -hmm. you know there seems to just be in this small area and they just weave it, up it down. Seems localized, yeah. yeah. It, it, it does seem it does seem localized and. Uh, I think if we were to stick a pin in a map for this area and go 15 miles out to sea and 15 miles inland, that would about work. But yeah. it, it, it does seem localised. But it wouldn't surprise me if we start getting reports of uh, deer fatalities, badger and fox inland. 
and people will it will drip through. We will get this information. I see Diane Farrell. That, hey, that's lovely, Diane. Thank you. Uh, because that dog is 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 he is gonna get a, a GoPro camera, uh, and I, I do realise people in chat that he's more entertaining than me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's great, isn't he? It's just funny. But yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so Nigel Logan, as Les ever thought of going to 30 West Street Pontefract, <clears throat> and uh, which I th think is the most haunted house in England at present. Really? Uh, no, I've never considered it, uh, Nigel, but it'd be, uh, it'd be fun to go up there and have a, and have a look. I suppose it's occupied and, and a private house, is it? I don't know. I, I think it is. And if Steve Ashbridge were in, he'd tell us, because I'm sure he stayed there. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did and it, great to have Nigel Logan in chat do you know uh, I won't go into great detail Nigel uh, but uh, this this fella who's just put that question up has had the most incredible close-up flying triangle sighting that I've ever heard about in my life there's not many people got to see the top of one of these things <clears throat> but he has and I, and we, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Nigel. But when when we, when I came and spoke to you a few months ago, off off the cuff, he rang his mate who was with him and asked him where he was, and his mate who didn't even know we were going to do anything came through, and he just relayed the same story that Nigel relayed, and that actually adds loads of credibility. Not that I ever doubted what you were telling me, but to, to see something like that, literally. 20 or 30 foot away while you stood on a cliff just past you. Incredible. <laughs> so uh, brilliant that you've shared that with us, Nigel. Thank you. And I've okay. just shared it with everybody. Else. And uh, Lee Roscoe sent a donation through, and it's a start of Bobby Wolf's uh, four legged friend GoPro fund. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and so so did uh, uh, Diane Farrell. So thank yeah. you. But you know, we're not asking for that, though, people. So I don't want to. I don't want to say that. But thank you. Yes. Yeah, Rebecca King, uh, monetary donation. Thank you, Rebecca. Go, Bobster Cam. I agree oh, he's, he's got with to Lee Yeah. Um, let's have a look. I might as well get the other one. Uh, it's Margaret Webster. That, that's for donation to Bobster and Diana Farrell, as you just read out. Uh, thank you, Diane, for the uh, donation. Uh, right then, let's have a look with this one. <coughs> one twenty-two evening, Paul and Les. Paul, oh, what do you make of the so-called Welsh Roswell incident? Uh, 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 you're talking about the Penturk. Penturk. Uh, I, I hope I pronounced it right, and if I haven't, I know that somebody in chat will pull me up. Uh, I don't know. We've 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 had uh, Kaz Clark on here. Uh, giving her account of what she saw and what she experienced on that night. In fact, that's somebody we need to get back on because I'm sure there's going to be updates. Yeah, uh, if, yeah. If, yeah. If, put your thumbs up, people, if you'd like us to try and get Cass Clark back on because I definitely will do that. And uh, Yeah, I think she's she, as strong as ever and determined as ever to get this um, you know, story where it needs to be. She, she she speaks about what she's seen, what she's experienced, the the struggle that she's had battling to get the, the freedom information reports out. She's she's unrelenting, you know. She's absolutely dogged determination to sort of prove what she's seen and what she's experienced. Once again, she'll probably never know what it was, and that's no 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 slant or slur at Cas Clark. But 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 if she can prove that something that I don't know non-human or n that wasn't military was in the sky that night, then then she's she, I think she's achieved all she needs to achieve. But uh, obviously she can. There's only her can answer that. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, brilliant account, and I'd like to get her back on. Is our Laura in? I've just seen Laura. Thought I did. Oh no, oh yeah yeah sure I did. Somebody's saying hi Laura anyway. But hi Laura. Uh, yes, so, and Shane Roberts. Nigel, yeah, Nigel Logan. Uh, has, has Paul ever thought of hiring a fishing boat to go out one evening with friends along the cliffs? I would be frightened to death. Seriously, not even a joke. I would be, Nigel, I would be frightened to death. Let's jump away from unexplained phenomena for a moment. When, when, when girls were little, eldest daughter, Sarah, we went down onto Arbor, and there's a guy that, if you've ever been to Bridge, you'll hear him shouting all summer long, speedboat rides, 
oh, take me out on boat, Dad, take me out on boat, will you take me? And it was a choppy sea, and so we went out on speedboat, and I knew as soon as that boat left harbour, I didn't want to be on it. I was seriously frightened to death. Mm. I, I, no fear in saying it. You know, we've got friends in harbour, Tom, Tom Quinn, and Tom said, why don't you come out with us on boat, Paul? Come out whenever you want. It's, yeah. it's, it's invited Les. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And, yeah, uh, and, and, and because of your uh, phobia of not uh, wanting to go, we didn't end well, up you, going. You don't need me. You don't need me. You just get yourself off. There's only there's two yeah. letters. No, that's that does it for me. I, I'd be frightened. I know I would. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And uh, no, I think uh, I'd probably do it if it, if uh, I was to go <laughs> with somebody else. And mm -hmm. uh, Paul, you can be on the cliffs top of the cliff there Lappy. and yeah yeah so to give us some bearing yeah yeah of where, where, uh, <laughs> yeah and we can obviously report back and you re report back to us on the to where mm. so good um, I, don't think I'd mind, I don't think i'd mind on a big cruise type boat you know because howard howard hughes has asked me well <laughs> every time to go on these yeah. cruises the I, don't unexplained quite, I don't think it quite worked there. It'd be grounded in no time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but they're not too bad. And I also had to turn down the Alaska, Seattle to Alaska one as well, just due to looking after somebody that we, you know, we can't make it. But uh, little boat, no, forget it. Okay, so we'll uh... ah, and Welsh Dragon Rising says, "Well done, Paul. I got it correct. Penturk. Thank you. <laughs> Penturk. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look then." Uh... Oh, oh for, right. So we see um, Laura Botel Sinclair says hi, Alison. Yeah, hi, Laura. I bet she's been busy today. Uh, it minute. was me who suggested 1423 to get a GoPro for uh, Bobby originally. I uh, best contribute and get him a well, bone. Thank you. Him a bone. Thank you very much. And, and, and if uh, if he doesn't have one on now in the next few weeks, you, you lot are going to be chasing me. So we'll have to sort it. And Carl Dan's there as well, eh, Carl? And uh, yeah. Good one. Right then, I think I've got no more questions in the chat box. And uh, we're going to run through a little video that we put on uh, Twitter today. Uh, yeah, before you do it, do you want me to just give them a breakdown of what we're looking at? Give them a at? preface of what, uh, yeah. What, yeah, what the story um, is. Yeah. I think last Monday, I, I, I maybe got date wrong, but I think it was last Monday, I was up on the clifftops with Pete. We, it's, we're up there all the time, as people know, and I would think 99.9% .9 of the time, nothing. Looking towards Filey, so I think this was in between Filey and Speet, and then we saw two lights that we thought came out of the water. Once again, lights. We're chasing lights, people, all the time. And uh, by the time you've got a camera on these things, and it would have been... Uh, it, this time it was the NX80, because I think uh, we, we've talked about that earlier. And... Uh, I'd just been normally I'd use Psionics, but I'm glad I used NX80 because it gave a true representation of its color. Yeah. They'd gone. By the time we'd got camera on, they'd gone. They were up and away. But then we saw them, we saw one again. Pete sort of saying, Hey, what's that? What's that? And I got the camera on it and I saw it. And it looks to go into the sea. So make of it what you will and yeah, just play right. Reckless. Yeah, we'll <laughs> get uh see if we can get that one up. And uh so before you play it, Les, there's the light. Oh, well, you can see that yet. Yeah. 14th yeah, of the, yeah, we're great there. <coughs> yeah. That's where you want to be looking, folks. And that so, that in the distance is Filey, the, the the lights that you can see. Yeah, oh, the the, the lights there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll run that there. And the light you can see flashing is the light at the end of Filey Brig, to the right hand side. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, further back. That one. That, that one yeah. Down. Look at that one. Down. We only managed wow. to catch it. We'll it and that 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 was about uh, as far as what you had managed. That to would it. That. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of time. In oh. fairness, though, these lights that we see—that's about the right color. I play it again, but those these lights that we see don't do that. These lights just appear and disappear. Um, you know, very windy night as well. Come out at water. 
I don't know. Just uh, once again, we have to make of these things whatever. You see, I'm looking there. It's six miles to Filey. So we're, it's at least four miles away if it's a little bit closer to Speeton. Yeah. And uh, what makes it even even better is that you can see the glow on the water, can't you? You can see the glow. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. And it, basically, though, what uh, for me, what makes these bits of footage better, and then once again, I'll say it they're not the proof of existence of aliens, people. They're not, are they? We know that, but we've got reference points. If that were just black, if I was facing the sea with that Sony camera, well, you we can see the cloud in the top, but we, we have reference points of the little town of Filey. But we'd already seen two. Which appeared to come up yeah. and then just disappear into the heavens, and then just peak, just caught this one. So, were the other two roughly in the same place, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they'd yeah. gone straight up. But th there's yeah. a gap of probably twenty minutes, thirty minutes between, and you know you, your eyes are kind of on swivels because you're not just looking towards Filey, you're you're looking all over the place as well as inland. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> That's it, isn't it? That's that's got to be the, and, and, be the most. Uh, one interesting other thing, thing. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to rule out flares here, but if I've seen flares, we've we've seen distress flares when there's been because we spend that much time up there with that light that's reflecting onto the water. If if I think if that had been a flare, you would have seen the smoke from the flare as well. And there's no there don't appear to be any smoke. No. But yeah, I just I just found that one interesting. I thought we'd put that on a bit more, a bit more detail than just a vague, uh, I don't know, pareidolia. Brilliant. And uh, let's see if we've got any more questions from the good people in the chat tonight. Nothing, nothing coming, Paul. So, um... okay, right. That's that's done. That then we'll shut up shop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. don't forget, folks. Yeah, it's all all questions from you guys in the yeah, chat. We, we, you know, love, we love questions on a Sunday night, people. But I'll I'll just go through an account that I've been sent from from Isle of Skye, right. and it goes back to 2019, and it's just a, a strange creature sighting. So this guy's called Paul, and he worked at a salmon feed plant in. I'm looking at it. Kill Leakin. Uh, or, or Kai Leakin, Kai Leakin on the Isle of Skye. And he told me that he can't remember the exact date, but he believes it, it, it was around October 2019 when, as he says it, when this incident occurred. Right. Approximately 3.30 to 4 a.m. in the morning. He's doing a night shift and he decides, is and, and where they're working, the salmon, the salmon feed plant, they've run out of gas canisters. Uh, he explained that they used... They use the gas canisters to power the work warehouse forklift trucks. So he set off to the stores, and the stores were about half a mile away from the warehouse, and that's where the gas canisters were stored. And he told me that they were not that it matters to you guys, but they're, they're driving a John D Gator four before to get these gas canisters. Weather conditions were dry and calm. Uh, Extreme, he explained that the site had extremely good lighting apart from the back road to the stores. Uh, no lighting at all. 3.34 in the morning. So pretty eerie, I would have thought. Uh, he, uh, he said everything looked okay. Everything seemed fine. Early hours at morning. And he described left-hand side at road had a thick hedge with bushes growing along the edge. And then suddenly he said... Uh, large black animal suddenly appeared at speed directly in front of his vehicle. And it, he estimated the distance to be 10 to 15 feet at the most. And it's approaching from side. He told me that the road's width was 35 feet. This is where it gets spooky. Or not spooky, but this is where it kind of gets interesting. 35 feet. He thinks it covered that distance in one pounds. Which is... <laughs> Is that possible? You know, I don't know. Uh, in, in one pound, he cannot be sure. 
he said he, he may have actually landed in center at road and took off again he said everything happened so fast but what else is interesting uh, he said it, dis it disappeared in a steep embankment down to the sea, the sea, but he never saw it lift off the surface of the road more than two and a half feet, which is, it doesn't seem right that some, you'd expect a big arc if it were a big cat to, to jump that distance, but he said it never seemed to get any higher than about two and a half feet off road. Really shook him up. Uh, so it covered 35 feet in two seconds or so. I'm just looking at this. Uh, extremely fast. Jumped in a low arc like pounds and uh yeah just interesting he said it's what stood out for him the most were the long curved tail of, of this thing that were jet black uh he said the old animal was nine feet he estimated nine feet in length and three feet in in thickness in height that he saw jumping i mean it's isle of sky it's not it's not east yorkshire but yeah, we're starting to get lots of reports from around different areas and just it just shows the extent of what people are seeing and experiencing. So he don't recall any facial expressions, total mystery to him. It's just an interesting sighting. But it threw me then to one up, up near Galloway, of one, of, one of my absolute best friends, Robbie Shankland, who passed away a few years ago, uh, cryptid researcher. Just Let me just do a background on Robbie. Um Back when I lived in Doncaster, probably, I don't know, 19, early 1990s, when we were living there, this guy, came, as a crofter, came down from Scotland to try and find work in Doncaster. And we became great friends, really good friends. And then all them years passed. And then probably about eight or nine years ago, he contacted me. He'd been to a conference, UFO conference in Scotland, a Scottish UFO conference, and my name had been brought up. And he said, are you the same bloke that we used from Doncaster, I think you must be. And we struck up a friendship again. You wouldn't think it, that's coincidence, isn't it? So anyway, me and Robbie struck up this con this great friendship again. Say so passed away. A great cryptid researcher who's really underrated when because I know there are a lot of researchers in this country and in Scotland have used his work and not getting credit he deserves because it all came from Robbie, a lot of it. But there you go. So Robbie told me that his brother who used to not mock him, but just had no regard for Robbie having this interest in the potential for a Bigfoot to exist in, in, in the Isles of Scotland. He used to work in a quarry. And once again, early hours of the morning, he went to fill up the, a, a diesel tank. And as he's going down the, the road, he told him this, uh, even though he's got no interest and no kind of, I don't know, just he's not going to pursue it like Robbie did, that a large bipedal creature, similar to a Bigfoot, walked across the road as he's going to fill these diesel tanks up to, to supply the lighting in the quarry. And he's just dragging a tractor and tra he's driving a tractor with a trailer. Absolutely terrified him and wouldn't do the night runs after that anymore. So these things are out there all the time. I just wonder how many people, I keep saying it, don't I, are sat on stories that just never, ever get told. So do we have any questions? <laughs> We've got a flurry of questions after I said we had no questions. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Ian Linney uh, is saying, Paul, we have seen the lights many times over the land. Well, yeah, we, we we have, mate. Yeah, we have. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll we'll get to see a few more. And, do you know, I don't think you'd come on and talk about it, but you've, you've seen some interesting things yourself. Uh, and, you know, when you talk about them and Pete, it, it's just as fascinating as anything I'm talking about today. It, re it really is. Uh, I, I remember this guy telling me about the time that he's doing a bit of shooting, all licensed, all legal. And he's in this particular wood and he turns around and he'll probably correct me if I'm well, I know he'll correct me if I'm wrong. But when he looks into the fork of a tree, he sees what he, at first what he thought was a wood pigeon, because we know they're a dull grey. But when he looked at it, he realises it's kind of the shape of, if you imagine the, the alien head in Whitley Strieber's communion. That's what he, as he described it to me, that's what I saw in my mind. So then he looked, no eyes, just this shape. And when he looked again, it had gone. Just just quirky little stories that kind of stick in your mind. And obviously they've st stuck in uh, in Linny's mind. But yeah, fire away, Les. Let's... Uh... Yeah, I've... Um... 
Let's have a look then. Uh, we are down to um, 14 23. Talking to the Bob says, Bobby reacted to anything while you've been out walking with him, Paul. That's a good question. Yeah, he, he has 14. Yeah, uh, it, it'll be summer or late summer last year. And I don't know why he did it, but I, somebody had alerted me to some deer carcasses that were in trees in Dane's Dyke, very close to entrance on back entrance as you leave Dane's yeah. Dyke. So I went to look for these things. I found them uh, early morning. But he and he's off his lead, but he wouldn't come in. He, and I think I sh it showed on footage. Can you remember that one, Les? And he's just stood, and I yeah. shouted at him, and he and <laughs> he, he did act odd. And he, he does strange things in house. He as in he looks at the wall and growls at the wall, and you know it just could be the comforts of madness because he is a bit mad, you know. But <laughs> just he's funny as out, isn't he? But do you know he, he just he, he growls at wall. He'll look as though he's seen something. But I reckon people in chat, people listening to this, you've probably got pets, be it a cat or a dog. The, and they do these things. It's almost like they animals are seeing things or sensing things that we aren't picking up on at all. And, you, you know, it's an ability that we've probably got, but we've lost, you know, or, or, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just, we've become that saturated with everything else that's around us. We've, we've just lost touch. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's down to heightened senses with animals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously cats uh, can see in the dark and dogs have got hearing like, uh, you know, they can hear a pin drop from oh, five yeah. miles away. Yeah. They can, so, hear, they can hear a biscuit packet open as well. Or a, or a biscuit <laughs> packet open, yeah. Uh, okay, I think you've tempted people now with uh, Nigel because Phil 84 is saying... Can we hear can Nigel's we hear Nigel account? account? But, uh, yeah. Do you know, Summer, I'll speak to Nigel. I don't think he'll mind, but we'll definitely do it, Phil, if Nigel's got no objection next Sunday. Uh, you know, it's not it's not going to take half an hour, but it's, it's a lengthy account. It's a great, incredible story. And uh, it coincides. Can anybody remember when the, the UK, they, they had the monster power outages and the Hornsey wind turbine, uh, whatever that, that, wind, that wind farm is called off, offshore, uh, th that was blamed for the catastrophic power failure. So uh, someone tells me it was 2018. Nigel, if he's still in chat, will tell us date. Uh, but it's interesting because... It was within days of that, and it was within sight of that, and I found that fascinating. That all sort of—I don't yeah. say it made it right; it, it linked it, but it was fascinating. Mm. So, and 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 it was a monster; it was a cast catastrophic power failure, and, yeah, and and they saw the triangle. Right, I'm conscious of the time now, but I'm hoping to plow through most of these, Paul. Must yeah. be quick with uh, most of them, I'm afraid. Uh, Paul, is there a coastal uh, mark in another country? you would like to visit for a scout watch? Uh, uh, yeah, I suppose there is. A, 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 not necessarily sky watch, Alex, but I'd love to spend some time in that forest in Romania, that Hoyabaku forest, uh, the, the haunted forest. I'd love to go to somewhere like Transylvania. Uh, there's, I don't suppose we're all doing it, aren't we? Everybody in chat will be thinking to themselves, you know, I'd love to go to some of these places because we've got, all got that shared interest. So, yeah, more than one place, Alex. And... Uh, when I see you up on them cliff tops in week, I'll ask you the same question. This guy comes up and, and he travels a fair distance. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's brilliant. You know, I mean, I'm only literally 10, 15 minutes away. Alex is nearly an hour to drive. And there's another guy who comes from Filingdales and spends time with us up there at least once, maybe twice a week. So, you know, just these people are just as important to what we're looking for as me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark Jones, would Paul and Les rather face a dogman or a Bigfoot? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> ah, all, I, 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 I don't know, Mark. I mean, it, it, we, we go to these places and I think the chances are, Mark, of experiencing it or seeing it are very, very slim. It's it's almost you're in right place at wrong time. Uh, and, and it's a combination of the right people as well. You know, I think some people, I don't mean attract this phenomena, but maybe the phenomena is attracted to them uh, for, some, for some reason. Maybe they've got some some physical or mental trait that they find interesting. I mean, we, we aren't going too deep into it. You know, s s some people think differently, don't they? A little bit different to other people. They're wired up. I mean, slightly autistic. You know, I, I, it could be me. I could be slightly autistic, so I'm not labelling anybody, and that's the way of people. 
And maybe these things are attracted to that trait because if let's assume that these things know what we're thinking and there's a lot of evidence there's, there's not a lot of evidence to prove their existence apart from anecdotal, but there's a lot of evidence from that anecdotal evidence, lots of words there that suggest it, uh, that, that say that these things know what we're thinking. I thought about picking my gun up and suddenly this thing, the hostile intent and even spoken words into the mind. Well, let's assume somebody thinks slightly different. That might be something that's really interesting to these things. I, I, just a thought, you know, because some of the research that we've done and some of the people that we've spoke to have been slightly different in their thought process, should we say. Christ, you've got to be so careful what you speak about, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, right, I'll move on. Only for pure... 2018, Nigel says, yeah. Yeah. And he didn't uh, mind me talking about the sighting. Thank you. Okay. Um, Lee Roscoe, then, as you can see, the question is, has anything see. happened there on the golf course of Dane's Dank, Paul? Um, <clears throat> no, but there's lots of things happened around the golf course, around that peripheral, as you know, Lee, because I've told you about some of these things. So, yeah. And there's there's a the lady in chat that this is one that I've got to cover. I only touched on it before of a huge bird, four foot tall, feathered variety, by the way, uh, stood on the edge of the golf course looking at this driver as they drove past in the car. So I'm only touching on that now. So if people want to hear me talk about that one in more detail, I will do because it's one that it, it needs talking about because, once again, we've got that multi-phenomena aspect. We've got this the, the, the lynx monster that I talked about, this this white emaciated figure that them two men saw on driving range. We've got the cryptid phenomena that people have seen and experienced in Dane's Dyke. And then we've got this huge bird, no bird, it's four foot tall, eagle type bird, but wrong coloration and everything yeah. on the golf course. Interesting. Weird. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, let's have a look then. We've got a question from uh, Living Adventure. Question, has anyone who has come to you, Paul, with their accounts, gone on to investigate their experience themselves? And if so, have they discovered anything else? It's a great question. And I think that's what we're all doing now. Uh, you know, my own experiences have led me to looking into this even more. And I think I think we're all doing it. Whether we're ever going to get to truth of what's happening, I don't know. And I'm not sure anybody, anybody really has. I know there's a lot of experts out there, but have they really actually solved it? I don't think they have. Uh, and I wish they could, and I wish I could. But unless one of these beings or this in, this intelligence, whatever it is that resides behind that firewall, decides it wants to step from beyond that veil and speak to somebody directly and inform them, and then would anybody believe them? Who'd believe it if, if you were told the truth of what was happening yeah. by this, this unknown other? Would anybody ever believe it? They wouldn't. Do, do, do you know, it's it's like, just briefly, Les, uh, but Chris Meek, when he talked about his sighting, the, the old guy's sighting that a few weeks ago when we had him on live stream, yeah. that he, he in, in his mind, he heard those beings. So he says, that was, say, a, that was a fascinating account. It, that it one. really was. And he heard those beings say, leave him. Nobody will believe him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And he heard them say it, you know, and it's a fact. So, yeah. I know you touched on this earlier, Paul, but Carl Dan is asking a similar question. Paul, uh, any more reports from One Cliff Woods? I've I've not heard anything, Carl, and great to see you in in chat, mate. Uh, as we've got, I, th I think they call her Deborah, who gave us this incredible inc account from One Cliff Woods that I'd love to go over because I've only ever done it once, and it's a long report. What when she was a little girl, what she saw. We've got the uh, the other guy who we we did a a pre-recorded stream with uh, who told us about his his Bigfoot encounter in Warncliffe Woods. So it's an interesting place, yeah. So yeah, anybody that's got any reports from that area, please fire them at us. Yeah, yeah. And let's have a look. We've got um, Colin, Colin Falcon for Paul and Les. With the warnings in the USA for the uh, coming eclipse, do you think it's pure fear porn or something more nefarious? I don't know quite no, what the warnings no, I are. I don't Paul, know, Colin. No, and and uh, you're kind of educating me here because I didn't. I've not. I've not looked at any of that, so I can't really answer your question. But I'll have a look, and uh, yeah, 
there's yeah. there's loads of I mean we've how many times have we been told it's going to be end at world and we're still here? Oh, well, yeah. we think we are anyway. <laughs> yeah, well it happened with the Nostradamus 2012, it happened with uh, what was it the changeover from 1999 to 2000 uh, where everything was going to go into a disaster period, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, the millennium and uh, yeah. So who knows? It's a great word that as well, Colin, isn't it? Nefarious. I really like that. Uh, no, it is honestly. That's, that's, but anyway, our friend uh, Shane Roberts, uh, Paul, would you react if a UFO landed just? How would you react if a landed uh, UFO landed just behind you on the cliff tops? Well, I, I don't know to be honest, uh, Shane. I, I, I don't know, is the answer. How could we? You know, the fishermen that saw the UFO land on the hillside, and once again, anecdotal, but there were a lot of them, and there's a, quite a few of them backed up what Mick Sigson's saying. They all, a lot of them just left in fear. Yeah, They they went in fear. Yeah, we find ourselves up there all the time. I'd like to think that I wouldn't run away. I don't think I'd go charging towards it. Uh, I don't know. I'd, it's hard to say what you'd do. What would you do, Shane? Yeah, that's the thing. It's um... Paul Askoff. There's another guy we need to get back on chat. Some great knowledge on, on the subject. So, yeah. I can't pronounce this. Uh... <laughs> oh, pie. Yeah. Um, so anyone had missing time in the vicinity of cryptids? That's a good question. Uh, uh, do you know something? Uh, during the making of Wolflands, which you can see behind Les's head there, the documentary, anybody who's not seen it, it's available on Amazon Prime. I'll just get that plug in. And if you want to go to truth, truthproof.uk, you can get the hard copy of the DVD or the Truthproof books. But missing time. When we did the Wolflands documentary, the, the guys close to Broxer Forest who had their experience, there's a discrepancy in time. And and the the two there were three witnesses, but the two I've spoken to are great guys. They they kind of realised that themselves that they can't work out that this thing watched them all night, but it had gone when it were morning, and there seems to be a gap. Whether that's missing time or not, I don't know. Uh, but uh, but I'm sure the the reports are out there of missing time connected to it. Uh, but that's the only one that I can really relate to from my own personal experience or what I've been told, you know, a first-hand account. Okay. Third fish, yeah. Do you think the military have, ad have advanced with anti-gravity soundless flying crafts uh, yet? I uh, saw so one over fi Filingdales. <laughs> I suppose it's possible. Well, uh, I'd, like, I'd, like, I'd like to know what you'd, you, what you'd actually seen there, Third Fish. I'm I'd, I'd love to know what you've seen over Filingdales. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, yeah. me and Les would love to speak to you. Yeah, yeah. But Paul Sinclair, yeah. ILF at gmail.com. Yeah, or lowercase. But I, I, Third Fish, I suppose that's possible. But I always go back to the, the flying triangles that people say are man made tech. And. I, I, well, do you know what I mean? I, I, I could be wrong, couldn't I? But, we, you know, they've not just been reported in 1990s. We'll jump back to John Hansen, who's got the probably the biggest archive of UFO reports, in, certainly in England. I know he has, but maybe in the world. It's, it's a monster library of reports that he's got, and he's the ex-detective, uh, John, a great guy. But he's got reports of flying triangles from 2000, uh, t t 101, 1901. Sorry, 101. You're 1901. Sorry, get your facts right, Paul. 1901. Yeah. Uh, is that man-made tech? Is that really man-made tech? The 1998 triangles, the 1994 triangles. In some instances, people are talking about them being the size of two football pictures and totally silent and just hanging in the sky. Uh, if it's if it's our tech, then then it's incredible. But why aren't we using it today? Yeah, I mean, if it's our tech, why would they show it like they do show it, as you say? Well, why would they show it over a, a built-up area? Why? I'll tell you what, Hull, where you live, Les, yeah. there's a lot of reports of triangle sightings in Hull, oh, yeah. over Hull, Hull, over Holderness and that area in the 1990s. Lots and lots of reports. Why would they fly them over Hull? <laughs> 
why not take them somewhere in Scotland or, or, or somewhere that's, you know, deserted if they want to test these things? I don't know. Right then. And I think this will have to be the last one. We're well over uh, time uh, tonight, Paul, but it's all been good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've really enjoyed the questions, questions that have come through. Yeah. Uh, so, Paul Askoff. Uh, are there any local areas away from Bempton with many reports worth investigating, Paul? Definitely, yeah. I, if, if Paul, I think uh, Cotton. I mean, it depends how far away you want to go. But if you want to go yeah. inland, uh, go up around Staxton. There's lots and lots. It's got a history of UFO sightings around Staxton and Forden, uh, or Cotton and Sledmere and Weaverthorpe. Weaverthorpe, little. In sort of nondescript village, beautiful village on East Yorkshire Wolds, but once again, I get lots of reports. When I say lots, I don't mean I get tens and twenties, but considering the size of the location, the place, yeah, I get lots of reports. That's why I always say Speeton on Clifts is probably far, far more prolific than anywhere else because I get lots of reports from Speeton yeah. and it's there's nobody there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just don't get a lot of footfall, yet people see things around that area. So I would say Weaverthorpe, Sledmere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is there many reports on your uh, UFO reporting page on the truthproof.uk website uh, in other areas? Uh, there is, yeah. Like there's Weaverthorpe lot. and places like that. Yeah, so that might yeah, be a good yeah. source of... Uh, of um, reading there. Uh, yes, so Paul, Paul uh, yeah, good point, Les. So if you've not looked at the truthproof.uk website, you'll see quite a lot of reports on there and around Friday Thorpe as well, which are all on the wolds. And I've not said that wrong, people. It's wolds. It means wilds in, in sort of Yorkshire dialect. So, yeah, the wilds. Well, we are done for tonight. And uh, it's been a great show, Paul. Thanks for all the questions. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, the questions come great. Sorry that we weren't there for you right at the beginning, people. Uh, my fault. I didn't put it out there. And uh, yeah, other than that, thank no you. Way. Yeah, we came good at the end. And that's the main I'll, thing. I'll, I'll just bring Alison in to say goodbye. Hello. Uh, thanks for uh, sending thank the questions through, Alison. So, and on that note, we shall uh, say good night. Thank you. Say good night, and we'll see you all Thursday. Have we got a guest for Thursday, Paul? Are we going uh, them? At this moment, it, it could be Damien Knott from Australia because I think he's got his dates mixed up and ah. he's he's put, he's put down this month, so we sh this Thursday, so we shall see. Okay, if not, so I'm going to tap up Paul Askoff, who's in the chat. <laughs> Thank there you. we go. Okay. So there we go. So it's good night from all of us then. Right, good night. Good night.